Today on the Business 360 podcast, we are welcoming someone who can shed some light on how the SBA can help your business, regardless if you are a new or existing entrepreneur. My guest is Edward Haddock, and he's the district director for the Arkansas SBA. Now, as the district director, Edward was responsible for the delivery of all SBA programs and services, including lending across his entire region. Edward helped businesses in his region secure over $4.4 billion in COVID relief funding. Edward, I'd like to welcome you to the Business 360 podcast. Uh, thanks for having me on, Rashad. Great. So we're going to get right to it. You know, as I stated above, there are a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs, many who've lost their jobs due to the pandemic, and, you know, they're taking their future in their own hands. How can the SBA help these entrepreneurs, specifically these new aspiring ones? Yeah, great question. I think uh, the COVID pandemic has just really changed the, the business landscape, um, at least the expectations of the business landscape in, in 20. Um, and I think moving forward, you know, even though we have lost uh, many good businesses, we still have the capital uh, and the underlying foundation of what those businesses were and are and can be. You know, we've got the human capital, we've got the inputs, we've got the material, and we still have the consumer demand. So uh, during COVID, I think COVID is a great opportunity to restructure a lot of businesses and will provide a lot of opportunity moving forward. Um, one thing SBA did to assist these businesses that were going through uh, these challenging times was uh, funding our resource partners uh, to an additional level. So our resource partner network can sit down with our businesses, whether they're at the startup phase, whether they're going through maybe a pivot and figuring out how to iterate their business model to get online and sell during the pandemic. For entrepreneurs that are new, you know, is the SBA doing something as far as requirements or something that the entrepreneur should know before they apply, you know, so that they know that they're qualified, that they can receive some, some type of loan. Sure. So, you know, one of the really big uh, caveats for, for startup funding uh, and especially for the EIDL, the paycheck protection in the COVID, those startup businesses aren't going to be eligible because they had to uh, be open by uh, uh, January 1, uh, of 2020. So those businesses aren't going to be able to access that COVID relief funding. But what new businesses can do is look at the traditional SBA lending programs and look at what opportunities are in those 7A, 504, and microloan programs that businesses can take advantage of. You know, one thing I, I suggest all new businesses do is take a trip out to sba.gov and we have a, an online learning module where you can um, plan, launch, manage, or grow a small business. Uh, and we've got training and mechanisms there for each stage of that entrepreneur. So when you're talking about the SBA specifically, I know the SBA does a lot more than lending, but there's aspiring entrepreneurs or, or even existing entrepreneurs who are looking for some type of boost in their business that usually comes down to lending. What would be an advantage for them to go with the SBA versus going to their local bank? Well, I think you, you bring up a great point, Rashab. Uh, most people think, well, SBA, I can just go to SBA and get a loan. Uh, most people don't know, and I think uh, this is one of those misnomers about the SBA, is generally we're not a direct lender. Businesses aren't coming to the SBA and applying directly for loans. The only time SBA does direct lending is in the event of a natural disaster. So those startup businesses and businesses that are seeking uh, SBA funding for either growth uh, operational liquidity or uh, startup capital need to have a relationship with an SBA lender. That would be your local community bank, a CDFI, even a national bank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, those are all SBA lenders as well. So what we do to help increase access to capital around the country is we guarantee loans done through those SBA lending partners. So first and foremost, I think if you're a new business and we know capital access is usually the number one challenge for our startup businesses, is make sure you're having a dialogue with a local lender in your community and build that relationship because first you're going to need to know, is that lender even an accredited SBA lender? Uh, and if they're not, then you know that's not an option for you right there. And, and you know, I think that's really good to know because... That's what some people have that misunderstanding that, listen, if I want a loan, I'm going to go directly to the SBA. But realistically, you work with a lender, could be your local bank, it usually is, and they work, the bank or the lending institution works directly with the SBA. 
even more so, Rashab, I, I would add an extra step in there. And I don't mean to, you know, to be a, a bureaucrat and continue to add steps to the startup process. But, uh, you know, really what we suggest is, a, a, let's say, a newer aspiring entrepreneur or a growing business wants to begin their journey to seek capital. Um, you know, you've raised money for businesses. I've raised money. It's, it's not a direct path all the time to the front door, right? So a lot of times, if we start that journey with A, finding information, our SBA resource partners can help. They're generally the first step in the process where if you meet with an SBDC, a women's business center, SCORE, or a regional innovation cluster partner, a lot of times they can help you put together your package and do a lot of that groundation, uh, that foundation building and the groundwork that you're going to need to be successful in achieving capital.